Good morning and a very warm welcome to this Sedba Prep School speech day and prize giving. My name is Richard Gledhill and I took over as chairman of the Board of Governors of Sedba School almost exactly a year ago. And my goodness, what a challenging year that has been for our pupils, for our teachers and staff and for our parents. But in true Sedbergian spirit, you've all risen wonderfully to these challenges. I couldn't be more proud of the prep school, what the pupils and staff have achieved over the last year, in spite of everything that Covid's thrown at them. The Covid crisis has underlined the importance for regular communication between the school and parents, not just about the new rules and protocols, but about life at the school and how the children are doing. We've tried to work hard at this and I hope you feel that we've done it well. For my part, one of the highlights of my week has been reading Mr Newman's regular missives to parents. Even with all the constraints of Covid, it's clear to me that Casterton Sedba Prep School is doing its very best for our pupils and that our pupils are doing their very best for the school and having a lot of fun along the way. So before I hand over to Mr Newman and our guest of honour Mr Fleck, I just want to say a big thank you to all the pupils for giving of their best throughout the year, to the headmaster and all the teachers and staff for just being brilliant, and to all the parents for being so supportive. Headmaster, over to you. Welcome Chairman, Governors, Principal, Parents, Sedbergians. What do you want to be when you grow up? It's a question we often ask children, isn't it? It's a, it's a great icebreaker. What do you want to be when you grow up? We might phrase it a little differently. We might say, what is your ambition? And to be ambitious is one of our core values. It's one of our ways of the wolf. And that's what I would like to talk to you about today. What do you want to be when you grow up? So where to start? Well, I started with reception. They're the youngest, but often the very wisest amongst us. And I sat down with them at their lunch table and after a typically random conversation that bounced from every topic from their dogs to their grandmothers to skyscrapers, we finally settled down to what it was they wanted to be when they grew up. And what did they want to be? Well, we had a ballerina, we had a scientist, we had a builder, we had a fossil finder, which was quickly upgraded impressively to paleontologist. And then the next child went one step further and actually wanted to be a brontosaurus itself. So pretty impressive ambition, uh, I think you'll agree. And then the last child said, fine. And I think you'll agree there's a glaring omission in the list there. And so I asked them, nobody here wants to be a headmaster then? And Sam, who said he wanted to be a fireman, said, well, he wanted to be a fireman and a headmaster. And that was pretty astute because if you know my role, actually fireman and headmaster <laughs> can at times be quite similar. Um, but you might also equally say you can't grow up and be a headmaster as well. Anyway, so then I left uh, reception, I went and found some older people, some boarders, and uh, I left reception deep in a discussion about how many teeth they had and went to find some year sevens and eights. And we had a, we had a range then again, we had medical, uh, paramedics, vets, I think featured in that list. We had scientific, including astronauts. We had sporting, of course. There was rugby, there was cricket, there was hockey in there. There were several lawyers that came up. Um, when I asked the children why, they said it's because, it's because they like arguing. Uh, and any parents of teenagers listening to this, I'm sure, could empathise. Um, and there were lots happy to carve their own niche and walk their own path. But there were also some that absolutely wanted to do what they called was in their blood. Uh, or as another pupil said, um, she wants to take over her parents' business when they die. 
<laughs> which is perhaps a slightly more cutthroat approach, but um, ambitious nonetheless. I asked the staff that are leaving us this year, what did they want to be when they were growing up? Well, Mr. Hammonds, aged 10, wanted to be a JCB digger driver, um, an ambition that was put to bed when he managed to do just that and flip his own shed on its roof. Uh, Miss McFetris and Miss Cattell wanted to be a ballerina and a vet, respectively. Mrs. Hammond wanted to be a guerrilla conservationist, like Diane Fossey. And Mrs. Townley was the most ambitious, perhaps, of them all. She wanted to grow up and present Blue Peter alongside John Noakes. Now, interestingly, none of them said teacher. Um, and I went back and checked my interview notes because I'm pretty sure that some of them would have said that to me when they were appointed. Of course, these colleagues who leave us, leave us not just as staff, but as friends, uh, and they will always be missed. But their shoes have been filled by a long list of applicants, and I could not be more excited about the team that we are ready to start this September with. Uh, they, all of them, share our ambition to help your children reach their potential and live out their ambitions. Andrew Fleck wanted to be an explorer when he was growing up, and anyone who knows him, that will come as no surprise with his love of the great outdoors. As a pupil and then a teacher, Andrew has been in boarding school education for 53 years. He arrived at Seba School in 2010 from Asheville College, and in that time, we have since seen the creation of Ron Chow, Seba School, Fuzhou, China, and also, of course, the merger with Casterton School and the formation of the prep school as we know it. Academic and extracurricular success under Andrew's watch has led to record pupil numbers, and this September, the senior school is oversubscribed. One cannot overstate the impact of Andrew on the prep school because, quite simply, without him, we would not be here. On a personal level, neither, neither would I. Um, I am forever grateful to him for appointing, guiding and supporting me over the years. Andrew, thank you. By the time you see this, there's every chance that Miranda Campbell is likely to be mother to a beautiful baby girl. So I asked Miranda, what do you want your baby to be when she grows up? And she said she didn't mind. She was very level-headed about it. Uh, happy either way. Uh, she could be either a neuroscientist or a rocket designer, which I thought was pretty measured. What do you want to be when you grow up? Well, from a school perspective, perhaps it's better to ask, what do we want to be? The team, the school. Well, in this pandemic year, we have taught over 35,000 virtual lessons, hundreds and hundreds of music and Lambda lessons we've raised thousands of pounds for charities. Our own assessments, um, UK maths challenges, standardized tests, all of them tell us that our pupils have powered through a very difficult year in typical Sedbergian spirit. If we've not been able to gather an audience, we have filmed instead. If we've not been able to play another school, we have competed amongst ourselves instead. We've continued to welcome pupils into the boarding house where they have continued to learn how to live and work alongside each other. In terms of ambition, I'm very proud to say that we have done more than just talk the talk. Sometimes ambition is recognised through awards. The senior school have won awards for their community outreach and for their boarding experience. I won a 2020 Brilliance Award from Inspired. Mr Newman, sorry, can you move your hand please? We can't see it. Oh, the Silver Award. Yes, the Silver Award. Thank you, Emma. Um, isn't it time you were off strategising or something? Uh, now, some pupils will have their ambitions realised in the receipt of one of the awards to follow. And congratulations if you've won. If you haven't, never let it blunt your ambition. Never give up. What do you want to be when you grow up? So as I reflect on the year in which we have flexed adapted and shown courage, I actually think a better way of asking the question is how do you want to be 
when you grow up, when we grow up. Our core values, our ways of the wolf are clear and they shape how we behave as pupils and as staff. Our academic ambition is equally clear, but alongside this, we want our children to grow up to be good, decent members of society who will go on to leave their mark in the world. This is how we want them to be when they grow up. And one of the year eights told me they wanted to be a politician. Well, given where politicians are in the news most, type, most days, I asked them why. And she said, very simply, I want to make a difference. As a school, how do we want to be? So we're leaving the cloud of coronavirus very much on an upward curve. Our community and our numbers are strong and only getting stronger. And we're soon going to announce our ambitious plans for the development of both the prep and senior campuses. It's tremendously exciting. As we move towards the 200th and 500th anniversaries of Casterton and Seba School, we are looking forward to reinforcing our position as the outstanding school in the north of England. Again, this is not just talking the talk. As I say, we, because it is a team effort. And at this point, I'd like to thank all the staff, from cleaning to catering to grounds to admin. Under pressure, you have thrived and remained resolutely optimistic. We owe you a great deal. If all the teachers wanted to be outstanding teachers when they were growing up, then congratulations, you have succeeded. I know that Mr. Chatterley, however, wanted to be an artist. Never give up your dreams, Mike. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you to our wonderful parents, many of whom are yet to really feel what it's like to be part of this family. I can't wait to welcome you back through the doors in September. And finally, thank you to the pupils. You never cease to amaze us. You've given us a lesson in how to put your best foot forward. And good luck to all of you moving on to the senior school. We're going to miss you. Grab every opportunity there that you're providing. We look forward to staying in touch. As I hand over to the choir and then Andrew Fleck, may I simply wish you all the very happiest and healthiest of summer holidays. I hope you have ambitious plans for them as well. Floriat Sebergia.
Thank you very much to Mr Newman for his very kind comments. Uh, I appreciate them very deeply, but I'm sure you can imagine uh, I'm embarrassed uh, to hear them as well. Sedba has been the pinnacle of my professional life. I am most proud of all that we have achieved, more so than any other part of my career. It's been an enormously satisfying period. And it's also been the happiest period of our family life. Uh, and we have enjoyed working and living in these wonderful surroundings with marvellous people. But I think the real cause for celebration of the success that you've just heard about is the shared experience. Teachers have taught well and have cared for our pupils really thoughtfully. We've been diligent about planning, finance, administration and much more and disciplined in our decision making. And pupils have worked hard, practiced well, they've learned tolerance and they've found solutions to their own problems. And I want to say thank you very much indeed to parents who are so supportive, trusting and make sacrifices in their own lives. All that you have heard is the success of this whole community and I have been immensely proud to lead it for a short period of time. My own parents never attended speech days or prize giving and for my part I ensured that I was never in danger of being called onto the platform. In fact, my parents resolutely refused to inform themselves about or discuss any of my grades. By contrast, they had a relentless interest in my effort, whether it was my work, sport or wider activities, and they would let, accept nothing less than perfect scores throughout. I think they were unusual, but I learned a huge amount from their example. I thought about them as I came across a book whilst I was sorting out our house prior to our move. For uh, the Fleck family, it's an important book, and it may be that it's an important book in your family as well. If you're not familiar with it, then I encourage you to read it, no matter how young you are, because it describes an important truth. This is the book. It's called Guess How Much I Love You. And I'll give you a sense of what it's about. Little nut brown hair, who was going to bed, held on tight to big nut brown hair's very long ears. He wanted to be sure that big nut brown hair was listening. Guess how much I love you, he said. I don't think I could guess that, said big nut brown hair. This much, said little nut brown hair, stretching out his arms as wide as they could go. Big nut brown hair had even longer arms. But I love you this much, he said. And so the book continues. I'm not going to tell you how it ends because I wouldn't want to spoil it. But we all know that simple is best, and on that basis, children's books are often the most profound. And I suggest to you that this one is one of those. The message here is that the most important things in life cannot be measured. We cannot measure love, how much someone loves us, how much we love somebody else. How can we measure beauty or joy? Is there a scale against which we measure trust, truth or loyalty? And clearly the answer to that question is no, there is not. And yet these are the fundamental values which determine our life's course and how we act as young and adult people. And so I put it to you that the most important things in life cannot be measured. And that's a really important 
thing to say on this day at prize giving. Because of course we celebrate all that our pupils have achieved in their work, in sports and in so many other aspects of school life. And I congratulate you all. It's right that you work hard and do well. But these are things that can be measured. And to all of you who are not collecting prizes, then I say this to you, don't worry. The really important things in life cannot be measured and you will never win prizes for them. So if you're not coming up on stage, don't worry. The important things will come your way. I think my parents understood all this. No matter that they were professionally successful or that I and my siblings have been equally so, still today the slightest mention of an accolade gets mocked in my family and we remain grounded. Our priorities lie in social and cultural debate and in making the lives of other people better. That is what has driven us throughout all our professional lives. It's a shared moral purpose that binds us together, and I offer it to you now as something that is truly worthwhile and immensely satisfying. So thank you for all that you have done. Thank you to teachers, to all of those who work behind the scenes in the school. Thank you very much to parents and pupils. Thank you very much indeed to the senior management and to Mr Newman for your leadership of a great, great prep school. I hope you have had a good year and congratulations on all that you have achieved. But more than that, congratulations for the difference that you will make in the future because it's in doing something for other people that you will find the greatest success and satisfaction. Thank you, Andrew. And now for our first round of awards. Congratulations, all of those award winners. And now let me introduce Toby and Marlo, many of our many Lambda pupils who kept their learning up over lockdown, and they're going to perform a piece for us. Thank you, boys. Hello, my name is Toby. And my name is Marlo, and today we'll be performing the case of Humpty Dumpty by Simon Worsley. I'll be playing the part of the witness. And I will be playing the part of the prosecutor. In this scene, the prosecutor is questioning the witness about the Yokingham City War. Do you swear? Yeah, sometimes. When I lose my temper. Like the other day I hit me thumb with Anna and I said... No, 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 no. I mean, do you swear by do you fuck your books like the evidence? <clears throat> Sorry, the evidence that you should give would be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Oh, that. Yeah, right, well. Good, you are builder, yes? That is correct, I am a builder. A builder of walls? Walls, houses, swimming pools, you name it, I'll build it. Yes, yes. Well, there's one in particular we are looking at today. The Yokingham City Wall? 
Yeah, that's one of mine. You built it? With me own hands. And could you tell the court who hired you to build it? Yeah, I could. Definitely. Well? Well what? Who was it? Oh, it was a council, wasn't it? Yorkingham City Council? Well, all the council's going to hire me to build a wall around York, you know. What's the matter with him? <laughs> How long did it take you to build the wall? Ooh, let me see. Sundays, obviously. You built a high wall around the entire city in six days. We don't hang about, me. We? Yeah, me and my crack team, Duck and Goose. Duck and Goose? An independent inspection has found that many other bricks on top of the wall were laid without mortar. Oh, yeah. Ran out, didn't we? Why didn't you go get some more? Didn't have time. Council wanted the wall up quick, so that's what we done. And did you at any time inform the council that the bricks on top of the wall were laid without mortar? Not exactly, no. So the council wouldn't have known this? Not unless they were stupid enough to climb on top of it. <sighs> no further questions. <laughs> Let's go. Again, congratulations to all those award winners. And now, taking us into a bit of music, let's listen to the choir.
And again, congratulations to all of you who have won an award this year. Now it's time to hand over to my outstanding heads of school, Kitty and Harry. Hello everyone, we hope you've enjoyed the last academic year as much as we have. I know it's been a tough year because of lockdowns, but the way that everyone's fought through together has been amazing. The challenges we have faced has taught us a great deal, and we have learned how important it is to be ambitious in everything we do. Ambition is one of the ways of the wolf, and to us, ambition is the desire and determination to achieve success. Looking back over this last year, I think we have all shown just that. It is through ambition that both pupils and staff alike have successfully navigated our way through the struggles of COVID and continue to deliver high educational standards, develop positive mindsets and to value the ways of the wolf. Ambition often being confused or associated with single-mindedness and competition. But here at Seven Prep, the ambition of teamwork is collaboration and most of all kindness. Making someone smile who is homesick may not seem comparable to coming first in the epic, However, a few kind words can truly make a huge difference to all people of all ages and backgrounds. Katie and I would both like to thank Mr Fleck for speaking today and for his long-term service and commitment to SEPA, which has shown real ambition and deserves to be admired. We would also like to thank all the teaching staff for adapting their ways of working and for showing flexibility and reassurance through these strange times. A school cannot function because of teachers and pupils alone. The support team are countless but not faceless and are greatly appreciated. The administration team, estates team as well as, as well as all of the household and kitchen staff have also played a huge role in our daily lives, making them run smoothly and efficiently. We are enormously grateful. Life and distance whilst at the prep school can feel far off and somewhat abstract, but the opportunities that the school gives every pupil fosters a long life will to achieve and desire in any subject musical instrument, acting role, and eventually into our future careers. The desire to achieve is also echoed into our personal careers. My ambition is to continue to strive and have a go in any circumstance, and to recognise that even if I don't win and achieve all my goals, I am still learning important lessons in the process of failure. I would like to personally thank Dr and Mrs Hoskins for taking me in during the month term. We played chess and probably ate too much ice cream, but I felt welcome. Also to Miss Follett, who successfully made the transition from teacher to boarding house mistress and more than filling the huge shoes left by Mrs Airy. You did a great job. Thank you, Miss Follett. We wish the best of luck for the upcoming year eights and we hope that your final year at Seven Prep is enjoyable and goes as planned. Ambition can be shown in many ways and we hope that whilst you enjoy your time at the prep school, you can show plenty of ambition in everything that you do. Thank you to our parents for our ongoing support, which is really important to us. And a final thank you to Mr Newman for his excellent leadership of the school through this very challenging year. Congratulations to all the prize winners, heads of school, heads of boarding and heads of day house and sports captains. We hope you have a lovely summer and come back to school in September to face fresh, new challenges and most of all, ready to be ambitious. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Headmaster, for your inspiring words. And thank you, Mr Fleck, for joining us at this important event in the prep school year. I just want to add my own thanks to Andrew Fleck for all he's done for SEDBA. In his 11 years at SEDBA, Andrew has been an exceptional leader. His vision and ambition for the two schools has shaped the SEDBA of the 21st century and has underpinned our continuing progress and success. In particular, Andrew led the merger of Casterton School and Sedba and oversaw the transfer of the prep school to this wonderful site. So I want to pay tribute to Andrew and his great legacy and to wish him 
and Anne every happiness in his retirement. Dan Harrison, the current headmaster of the senior school, who I'm sure many of you will know, will take over the leadership of Sedbergh School when Andrew retires. Mr Harrison is a hugely experienced headmaster and works very closely with Mr Newman, so I'm totally confident that our two schools are in very safe hands. Thank you for putting up with another virtual speech day. I do hope that normal service will be resumed by next year and I look forward to having the opportunity to meet many of you in person rather than just online. Have a great summer, stay well and safe. Thank you for joining us today.